All right. Today I got probably the most mainstream guest I've ever had on my podcast on serious and silliness, the great actor himself, Tom Sizemore. What's up, Tom? I'm good, thanks. How are you? That's very, very kind words you said there. Thank you. Of course, of course. Are you kidding? I was I'm a I grew up loving movies and my parents grew up loving movies, man. And uh and as far as I'm concerned, the 70s and the 90s were the two greatest eras of movies ever and you were right in the mix of it in the 90s man yeah it was um i did i i didn't know it at the time but um um i didn't know it was gonna be so, so um i didn't know it was gonna be so so terrific i mean when, when i i started started my first movie was born on the fourth of july in 89 and I, I i didn't know that um i was about to have um until 2005 ish 2003, um, um, just the, one of the greatest epochs eras in, in, in motion pictures, and uh, the number of directors that it was like. I remember making a list um, with um, Scott Silver, um, who's gone on to become a great writer, and you know did the Joker with um, Todd Phillips. Um, he was my he was my roommate. I met him on, on a movie, and um, he was my driver in this little movie called Watch It in Chicago. Mm -hmm. He came out and went to film school and lived, lived with me, and we were became great friends but um we were making a list of directors in 90 92 92 because um my agent had said um um i just signed with caa and, and he said uh don't worry about um the roles so much worry about the directors um, you want to work with the best director you know at your level let's let's identify um your favorites and i'll tell you my favorites mm -hmm. and i'll tell you who's coming who I think is coming, right? Mm -hmm. And so we, we had like a, a hit list of directors, like Oliver Stone, Lawrence Kasdan, um, um, Quentin had Quentin had joined the fray. That yeah, he had just done Reservoir Dogs, mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, but, but, but uh, I'm not blanking right now off the top of my head. But um, I understand. Um, uh, let's see. You got you, you work like, Michael like Mann. Them. It was like yeah. Michael Mann. It was like twenty of them, and I Gosling. hit eight, and I hit eight of them. Yeah, and I hit eight of them. we identified like twenty of them, and I hit eight of them. Well, and, since, uh, since we're on the topic, I'm going to ask you. I was going to say this to the end, but I was, I'm going to ask you now. Why Scott, do you, Tony Scott? Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah, right. Why do you Why do you think the originality and the the idea to try new things died? Is gone. Is gone, yeah. Because in the '90s, it was everything was original. You had great directors, you had great screenplays, you had great actors, and now basically, movies. When you go to the movies, it is either a superhero movie or a, a terrible remake, or you know, it's just horrible. Um. Well, I, I, um, I, I read, a, I read, a, I read a, um, a, a number of articles um, about it. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, and uh, my my memory shot, but um. About the, about Marvel did how, how Marvel kind of um cornered the cornered the market on these um, mm -hmm. um not cornered the market but what Marvel did and what the the um it used to be I know this is one of, one of the problems was that when you had Warner Brothers and Paramount and, and these studios were, were family run businesses family run businesses in the beginning and even mm -hmm. when they even when they became bigger they were still f film people I mean it was still film people like Bill Mechanic at Fox. Um, Sherry Lansing at Paramount. They, they, they weren't they weren't from a, a family of, of film people, but they were film people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when and when um, I forget which studio it was, when, when one of the studios I think became just part of um, a huge conglomerate, and they put uh, their their leading executive who was able to expand their whatever it was they were doing whatever he did before. I mean, maybe it was um, maybe it was sanitation or something. Mm -hmm. They went away from the film people and went in, and and at the very top levels, put in these people that were just gonna, um, you know, gonna um, secure, you know, maximize profits every day. Let's right. just maximize profits every day, and um, that, that that that's our those those are our marching orders going forward. Mm -hmm. We're gonna maximize so maximize profits every day. That means maximize profits every quarter. That means maximize profits every every year. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put these things on the front burner. To be made, these types of movies make the most money, and there was no, there was no, they didn't pay heed to any, um, you know, they didn't pay heed to like taste uh, or, or like 
the, 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 the academy. Um, it used to be, I know this is true also, because I, I was the tail end of all these great people and these, these, these great executives, that every studio had a, a, a group of movies or two or three, maybe even more, but usually just two or three that they were making specifically to compete for the greatest move, the best picture of the year for the Academy mm-hmm. or to go to Cannes, to, you know, to, to, to go out there and really, you know, be great. And um, that doesn't exist anymore. There is, there's, there, there's no, there's no, um, you never hear about it. You never hear, okay. They're, they're um, like when private Ryan was made. I mean, I, I knew that, um, it was it was um, in, in DreamWorks and Paramount's eyes. It was um, it was going to be their front runner for Best Picture, and they were going to they were going to try and get try and get um, well Tom was going to get nominated most likely. They were trying to get me nominated, maybe maybe Matt Damon, and um, but there was this other movie called um, Shakespeare in Love that Miramax was making, and that they the Harvey and Harvey and Bob and those guys over there thought would really um, could give us a run for the money, give us a run for our money. It was a very different type of movie. But um, had the best picture of Kutramon, whatever that was at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, you'd have all these lunches you'd go to, and it doesn't go on anymore. I mean, when, when Private Ryan was when it was when it was a, called award season, you know, I was invited to these lunches, you know, Hollywood Foreign Press and these people over here who who voted, and um, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't go on anymore. And so when when um when your when your decision makers are are just are in a bottom line business. Um, it, it's just about what kind of what kind of how is this movie performing? Um, you're gonna you're gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna find your terms of endearments, and you're not gonna find your mm. after born killers. You're, you're just in my left foot. You're not gonna find those movies, and if you do, you're not gonna make them. Yeah. Okay. So they don't want to take any chance. They want it's uh it's, it's a business there's driven no, profit there's no, driven. There's, there's no chances being taken out. Yeah, and it has to small s- appearances. I mean, there's no chances of being taken. Right, and they have to sell globally too, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, movies, movies open now. They don't open in America and then open in Europe. They open the same day. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, they right, open right. the same day now, all over the world. Uh, I never thought I would see because my parents were movie fanatics. My because you know they grew up during the uh, 1950s. And I, I was, uh, you know, I'm a movie nut and um, I never thought I would see a day where movies were not part of American pop culture and, yeah. that, and the death of the uh, movie star. I mean, there was, you know, there's, you know, there's like no Crazy, real. It? Yeah, it really is because that, de- that defined America for, you know, a century and now it, it, it's gone. Um, you, know, you, you, had, you had Marlon Brando and James Dean and Montgomery Cliff in the 50s. That's right. This this. this was a movie star, but it was a, it, it amplified these lost young men um, in, in America. It was part of our part of our our, 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 our pop landscape and our our Perfect. emotional landscape. Yeah. And then, you, then you had Stallone in the eighties. You know right. when America was trying to, the Reagan era. You mm-hmm. know, you could look at the president. Look at some of the movie stars. You know, you had the, you had Sl- Sl- Sly, and then you had Cruz, the Can Do Kid. He's, he wasn't troubled. He mm-hmm. wasn't he wasn't a guy with a lot of problems. He was fixing problems in risky business and Top Gun. Right, and right, right, that's gone now. Yeah, there, there, there's there's no actor out there or, or movie star out there right now who you could go is connects to Joe Biden. No, you know, no, the, no, the no, landscape. There, no, def, no, definitely not. It's not there anymore. And all the talent seems to have been moved to streaming services. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's where I want to get to too. I mean, yeah, I don't blame that's, you. That's where the good writing is. Yeah, it that's really is. The, the original thinkers are. Um. I mean, I Ozark say, is wonderful. Ozark is oh, wonderful. Ozark was the last. The last season was a little over the top, but Ozark was great. <laughs> I think, it started I over the top. Uh, yeah, it started started over. Over. But the third one, it was ridi- <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I got so we're, since we're on this topic, I got a couple of questions because I my wife kills me. She wants to kill me every time I watch a movie because I'm like that wouldn't happen. That's bullshit. So <laughs> I, I I I need when I'm watching a movie, I need some reality in my fantasy. Do you know what I mean? Even if I, even if I'm, I'm, I'm watching like the new Star Wars, I'm or just Matrix going, or something, you want some reality in your fantasy? I yeah, it. it just doesn't. It you know. All right, so like, <clears throat> like for example, they put a lot of masculine traits on feminine lead roles now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like like the strong, uh, 
you know, non-emotional. Uh, did did, did uh, Laura Lenny? Did Laura Lenny's performance in, in Ozark spark this in you right now? Who is Laura Lenny? She's the female the wife? lead in Ozark. Yeah, the wife. Yeah, uh, that. Well, I mean, she's one of them. Uh, but okay. even in the even in the last season, where the uh, in the Mexican drug cartel, his sister mm-hmm. takes mm-hmm. over. You know, like she's uh, brutal, I'm, bro. Yeah, I, she's great ruthless, actress, ruthless. But I'm watching. I'm going. That would never happen. Right, a woman would never run a Mexican drug cartel, you know. I don't. I, I from what I know about, I don't know much, but it doesn't seem like it's in the cards. Right, 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 right. right, right. right. So what I mean is, I'm, I'll watch it and I'll be like, that doesn't happen. And like, uh, and they'll like the the detail that in the movies that you were in in the '90s and Born on Fourth of July and and uh, and uh, True Romance and you know you True, to go down the list, the, the yeah. natural the detail. So there was like a scene, and this is why I, my wife. Think hates watching movies with me. There's a scene in Ozark where one of the gunmen for the Mexican drug cartel puts the gun to the head of a young girl whose partner's in the casino in the back of her car and says, "Get out of the business, or we're going to kill you." And the next day, she just goes right back to work. And I'm like, why? you know, it, why does it doesn't make any sense? Do you do you know what I mean? And she's just I know, I know the scene too. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just you know that girl would have ran scared shitless. You know, right? Why, so is there any particular reason? Uh, did they try to cram too much into one season? Is it contractual? I think that's, I think that's what it is. They try to cram too much shit. And, I think so. Yeah. You had 10 episodes. It used to be 22 episodes. Right. I mean, there was more time to stretch out and breathe before. Okay. They try to cram a lot in, especially if it's good. They yeah. They got, they, got, they got some, they can make, I think sometimes when it's really good, they try to cram too much and they're thinking, we got, we got, we have some license, we have some leeway here because we're, we're thought of so well. Mm. Let's push it a little bit and see what we can do. Okay. You know I mean? Yeah. Now, uh, another question about the the industry, and then we'll get on to you. Um, I would say, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'd say the mid to late '60s, casting started changing in Hollywood. They kind of wanted people that looked like normal people. They weren't Hollywood good looking, and that kind of went up until through the '90s, right? So you Justin had Hoffman, like Dustin Hoffman and in, in, um, in, yeah, uh, the first sorry, what was it called? Um, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Robinson. Yeah. You, know, Gene, uh, Gene, you could go down the list. Gene Hackman. And, you know, yeah. these were not good looking guys. It definitely happened. It definitely happened. They definitely did that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you had your you had your your, your great looking, you know, unbelievably handsome guys. But then right. you had your, your Hoffman, Hackman, De Niro. Right. Um, guys who were nice looking, but weren't beautiful. Yeah. And even with the women, I mean, you know, um, uh, they were attractive, but they weren't like knockouts. Like, um, who am I thinking of? You know, like uh, Glenn Close or Meryl, um, Street. Meryl, Meryl Street. Street. Right. She's an attractive woman, but not the Hollywood glamour. Not glamorous um, like that. Yeah. Why did they go in that direction and why did they escape uh-huh. from that direction? I don't know. I, feel like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why they did. I'm glad they did because I, I definitely fall into that, you know, um, not so beautiful thing but uh, okay look you know um i'm glad they did i don't know why they did they, I mean, they were just trying to cast the best actors you know? yeah the talent yeah 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 try yeah. to, try to cast- identify the, the talent and, and and run with that yeah casting was it was important you know because sometimes you know you throw a a good looking guy in the mix and it just doesn't work you know yeah, hollywood good looking your, your brad pitt is uncommon Right, 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 right. right, right because right. he is so good looking and he is such a good actor. It's just uncommon. Right, 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 right. right exactly. All right. So let's let's get on to you. You grew up in Detroit. Yeah. Okay. And from what I understand, you're highly educated. You have a PhD. And, um, yeah, in theater history. Um, but um, I, I, my main thing was I was an act. I went to undergraduate college and graduate school, and I studied acting. Okay. And, um, but in, in doing so, I um, I got educated. You know, I, I you know, you couldn't help me get educated. Okay. When I when I was uh, when I was in high school in 1978, 79, um, you're ready to graduate. Um, I wanted to be an actor. I, I knew I wanted to be an actor. And um, so, w- what do you do? You know, I'm, I live in Detroit. I, I I'm not well traveled at that point. I wasn't well traveled or anything. So um, I, I I fortunately went to a, a there was an undergraduate college in my hometown. Uh, Detroit called Wayne State University, which had at the time, and I'm not sure what they're doing right now, but um, one of the, the better acting programs, both undergraduate and graduate in, uh, in, in, in the, the country. Mm-hmm. They had um, the Bonstell Theater was the undergraduate place and the Hillberry was the graduate school. And um, I, um, I was lucky enough to get, get in there. And 
the Wayne State was um was was the older older guard at at, at the, what was going on right then in the, in the mid seventies late seventies there was a there was a, uh, a an educator named Robert Brustein from Harvard who wanted to start a group of wanted to start a group of colleges educating the what he called the new American actor and nice. that new American actor would be Kevin Klein William Hurt Robin Williams an actor who could do um, Shakespeare. Um, and do kitchen sink drama, which is what we, which is naturalism, which is what we see on TV and in the movies every day. You know, it's just mm-hmm. so. Um, at Juilliard and Yale, and um, they were two. They started a, called the League of Professional Actor Training Programs, the PATP, and it was thirteen colleges. It was um, Yale, Juilliard, um, University of California, San Diego, Southern Methodist, Temple University. Um, University of Washington, Seattle, Brandeis. Okay, that's seven of them. I know them all, but I'm not going to name them all. But they became, they, they all, uh, they all threw their hat into this new American actor, which was the training was going to focus on training an actor who in three years time would be able to do a, um, a Shakespeare, do a leading Shakespearean play in, a, in, a, in the park in New York, where you have huge, you got to be able to, you got to be able to project and, you know, to do that with your voice. And then the next night, if you're in a repertory, do um, a Mice and Men or um, a Mammoth or you know, a Shepherd, where you, it's, you know, it's like watching, um, you know, Ozark, you know, uh, right. that, that you'd have that, you'd train that kind of actor. Right. So have the, the, the classes and the teachers, you know, the guys who are in there teaching us voice production and movement for the actor and all this jazz, we're, you know, we're specific people, you know, um, and um, they did it. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I was fortunate enough to go to Temple University and uh, I got, I had some just unbelievably good teachers. After I went to Wayne, I, I went to Temple and um, I was, I went to, I went to Wayne and um, I did it in three years. And um, so I had all of it. I had all of that educating and, you know, they focus on production too. So you're doing these plays. Mm-hmm. So um, by the time I got out of college, when I got out of college at 23, I was, um, I already been in like, um, 18 straight plays and in, in front of lots of people doing um Iago and um Othello and simultaneously doing um um Hurley Burley by David Rabe and uh which is a big play that done, done and made into a movie later by Sean Penn uh-huh. um so I got a, I I was one of those actors that was was able to was fortunate enough to do that so and I, I was able to discover that because when I went to Wayne there were some younger instructors there who you know I said, what do you do? How, how do I, how do I, how do I put myself in a position to go to New York city or, or Los Angeles and be able to um, get an agent and audition for um, Martin Scorsese or Oliver Stone and get cast? How do I get in that? How do I get into that? Just the possibility of that happening for myself. Mm. And um, that one of the ways was what I just described to you. Um, Another one was um, one of my teachers saying, you could just move to either city and find a T. Te- these are the, the miser technique. You can just move there and get one of these acting classes that are, are renowned in these cities. But that's hard to do, too. You know, mm. you could move to New York and get in the actor studio, which was what James Dean did and, you know, a bunch of people. Um, so um, that, 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 that's um, that's why I was in, in the university setting for so long. OK, it was great. It was great, too. I mean, I loved it. Right, 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 right. It was right. great, you know. Yeah. There was no um, financial pressures. Um, you do these plays, and it was just so rich, you know. All, all these playwrights, and it was just great, man. You know, That's right. uh, back then, you know. Um, I think schools really, uh, you know, put a lot of emphasis on on art, you know, music mm-hmm. and and uh, music and acting and uh, theater. And I don't see it so much anymore. You know, I think they, they don't. They don't. The yeah. universities I went to, you you could always. The, the, the Christmas season was full of like the music department was doing was doing these great things you know the first Noel and the Christmas Carol and all this stuff and um, it was just part of the um, part of the university was this the arts programs mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I don't I, I don't see it as much um, of course I don't I'm not looking for it either but it, it just seems to be a, we've turned away with the internet and it's just a, it's just different now it's just it's not as important to, it's not as important to people. Yeah, yeah. Going to, college isn't, going to college isn't even that important. It, 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 yeah, it really isn't. And it's... Uh, it's it, it, how, I mean, you see me, I mean, you look much younger than me. Yeah. Um, 
How old are you? Do you mind me asking? 46. Oh, okay. Well, you look you look great. You, you, I thought you were like 35. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, but like my, my kids are 17. The, there is not a great emphasis on going to college. No. It, it blows my mind. Yeah. Especially for boys. Yeah, there's this especially for boys. Is that college you, today you, uh, on the, the, the uh, truck, col- you, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. College today is 60% women. Uh, it is? It, I, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's 60% women. And they beg women to go into uh STEM fields, science, technology, uh, engineering and mathematics. And they they still women still want to go into, you know, social sciences or teaching or social work or so on and so forth. Um, in, in, in America. The women want to do that, right? And they don't want to go into this. This no, science they program. don't, and that's because that's what you know. They're that's what their traits show. They're caring. They're compassionate. So they want to do things like nursing and social work. That's their instinct, right? That's yeah, their instinct. Exa- exactly. You know, and I mean, you, you you see it when you're a when you're a kid. I mean, you know, you take a little girl and she wants to play like school. You take mm-hmm. a boy. She he either wants to play war or cops and robbers, or he wants to build something. You know, it's just. Can, it's, can I ask you why? Um, sure. why, why is there this? Um, why are they trying to push John? push women in, in, into studying this and, and pursuing this as a career. Do you know why? Well, they're trying to make a equal opportunity, um, but you can't force anybody to do it. I mean, it, it's all over through, through uh, from what I understand, it's all over through, through politics, you know, um, where they're trying to, uh, they're, they're, the feminist role is trying to push more women into engineering mathematics so it could be equal opportunity an equal outcome. But the problem is you can't, you can't force anybody to do it. You know, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I, and even I went to college too, and I have a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And I, I have one in psychology and one in, in business. And I tried uh, for a few years to go on wall street and I hated it. I fucking hated every minute of it, you know? And then my, I come from a family of blue collar guys, you know, my, everybody's an electrician. The day I started as an electrician's apprentice, I was like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> that really? was it. Absolutely. Yeah. So now I'm a sewer worker in New York City. <laughs> you guys make money, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's uh, it's all it's all knock around guys, all New York guys. Um, but let, let's get back, let's get back to you. Uh, okay, uh your first role was born on the fourth of July. Yeah, my first movie. Wow. How did that I mean that's that's hitting a home run right out of the box? Well, um, yeah, it was. I mean, I got to go to the Philippines um for three weeks and uh I played a character named Vet One, <laughs> but I had um, one. I had three really good scenes um, um, with Tom and Willem, and then and then Tom and Willem again, Tom Cruise and Willem Dafoe, and then um, and I, I don't know if you remember, remember the movie, but I'm the, the the vet who has the um, the Japanese um, flag on my around my head as a bandana. And I, and I come down the, the thing. I'm going bonsai, motherfucker. Bonsai. Yeah, 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 that's right. me. That's yeah, me. I remember. Sure, sure, absolutely. <laughs> that was my um my third, fourth day working on a movie in my life. That day, that's, that's unbelievable. Like you, you, so it was destined. You know, you would. And so when you go down the, I remember the first, the first uh, role I remember you in was in Lockup. That was right after that. Uh, yeah, and my father took me to go see it because we're from New York and we were we we're from Brooklyn originally. Mm-hmm. And I remember my father saying, that guy's got to be from Brooklyn. <laughs> I lived in Brooklyn then. I lived in Brooklyn. I, I, Did you I, I, really? I the, yeah, I lived on a, um, Clinton and DeGraw in, 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 in um, um, Cobble Hill. Yeah, that's where my family was from because they were mostly, you know, at, at the really? time, they're mostly Italian. They were from Carroll Gardens, President Henry. Oh, and, was right next to, I lived right on the border right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. DeGraw yeah. was the, the street, you know, right yeah. there. It just it started severely changing in the 80s and 90s, but before that, it was all Italian. You know? <clears throat> it was a great neighborhood. It was my first neighborhood I lived in in New York. Wow. wow. Another five years. Small world, right? 357A Clinton Street. 357A Clinton Street. Small. Yeah. That's a small world. Um, mm-hmm. So I've noticed that like the majority of your, your roles you got were basically rough dudes, East Coast guys. Uh, either you were a badass cop or you were a gangster or you were, uh, you know, a, you know uh, a tough guy. Yeah. Um, is that yeah. what you were just good at? Were you typecasted? Did you enjoy those roles? Um, I, I think I was a little bit typecast, but I didn't care because I liked those parts and I, I, I knew how to do them. Um, okay. I'm not really a tough guy and I wasn't a cop, but I knew a lot of tough guys and I knew a lot of cops. Right. So, right, um, right. You know, I grew up in a blue collar neighborhood in, in Detroit where a bunch of my buddies, not a bunch, some of my friends joined the police force. Um, one of them was um, a little bit, uh, had a bit more ambition, joined the FBI. And um, 
then of course there was your um your cat you started selling pot and um it ended up becoming kind of like criminals you know and um mm-hmm. and um th- that whole aspect so i i knew the i knew that i knew that i knew those guys and i and i was close to those worlds they were in although i was a student and um i didn't i didn't you know do any of that criminal criminal stuff and didn't want to be a cop but um i i knew it and i I liked it in movies too. I, 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 you know, cops and robbers has always been terrific for me. I mean, you know, monsters so, and cops is, is uh, works for me. You know, yeah, I, like I still like it. Oh, all right, good, good, good. Because uh, it would suck that you if you got into a role that you were typecasting and you hated doing it. <laughs> I know. I was lucky that way. I, I, I didn't mind being ca- typecast as a cop or a, a gangster. I didn't mind it at all. Did you ever do a role that was completely different and you were you you loved doing it? Com- you know. Um, yeah, I, I and um and um um it's called Witness to the Mob. I play a mobster though, but he's um uh, he's married, he's 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 quiet, he's not he's he's not he's not you know a show off, he's um a family man. If if he hadn't become a, a criminal, you know, you could see him, you know, um maybe being um the head of a university or something. Mm. Just with Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. And I had to join the witness protection program. Mm. So yeah, it was based on a real guy named Robert Batten out of Boston. Mm. And it just was not, it wasn't something that I, that I, I when I read it, I was like, well, why, why do they want me to do this? But I had a, a blast doing it. I did a Force Whitaker and Mary Elizabeth Master Antonio. It was just, a, it was great, a great time, great experience. And didn't you also play John Gotti? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, wh- and what was the name of that film? Called Witness to the Mob. It was a oh, okay. made for TV miniseries that, that um, um, Tribeca did, uh, Jane Rosenthal, Robert De Niro. And um, it could have been better. It could have been better. It could have been better. But it was good. Nick, Nick Turturro played. Uh, it was more focused on Sammy the Bull. Right. But, right, right. Um, it, it was good. I, I, I'd like to have another, have another whack at it. But, you know. Yeah, of course. Of course. Goes. I think that the gangster movies are, uh, are a thing of the past. We really don't see that much anymore. You don't see them at all, do you? No, That's not crazy. at all. I mean, they kind of, uh, and, but you know, the, Hollywood has a, has a, uh, a, a, a trend where trends of different types of movies come in and out, you know, in the, in the fifties, it was, you know, a lot of, um, in uh, Westerns and then it, it, it became a lot of, uh, you know, in the eighties had a lot of action and, then, uh, you know, you had your gangster stuff in the 90s into the early 2000s, you know, whatever kind of worked. And and some like uh, you were in a, a Western, Wyatt Earp. I, I loved it. And um, but unfortunately, it wasn't Tombstone. I know Tombstone was better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Tombstone I remember that. And I remember them coming out at the same time. And I was a kid and I remember saying to myself, why are they releasing the same movie? You, you know, and there were I, don't two know why, I don't know how that happened. But I don't yeah. Know why. <laughs> but, um, I mean, Val just gave a, I mean, the whole movie, too, but Kilmer's performance was inspired. I mean, it was just really wonderful. What what character did you play in Wyatt Earp? Val played um, Doc Holliday. I played oh. Bat Masterson. Okay. But, okay. And Bill Pullman was Ed Masterson, my brother. We, we, right. were kind of a, we were kind of a side plot. They shot a lot more than was in the movie, but I had a great, I had a great time doing it, working with Kevin and uh, Larry Kasdan and, 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 and Bill Pullman. Okay. When you take these roles... Like uh, especially the ones that are very detailed, like a Heat or Saving Private Ryan. Do you have to do some serious studying and training? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, um, for um, well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you do. Um, for Heat, um, well, the Heat, 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 we primarily um, for the first six weeks we were um, training with the weapons and and gearing up to do the uh, the big arm the big robbery and shoot out scene. movie um but um it was an enormous amount of work you know we started out you know just standing there and taking our right foot and moving it to the right you know and then moving our hand to our hip you know where the our gun would be with no gun on us we started that kind of bear, pared down and then built they built us up to where we we do what you see us doing the movie mm. so that that was kind of unusual that we were allowed to do that it was great because of and we got to do it because it was Michael and the budget was there and, you know, actors wanted to do it. Um, we want, we, we, we had to do it if you were to be in the movie, but um, for, for Private Ryan, I mean, I, 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 you kind of left to your own. Like I, I had to make up a backstory for my guy and, the, and the, that's up to the actor, you know? Um, mm. And I, I did, I made up a, I had to investigate, you know, what it was like to be alive in America in um, the thirties and forties and um, where, would I, where would I, where would I might be from and, I, I built all that into my person so I could play Michael Horvath 
with um with more um credibility i guess mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and for me i i knew who this guy is i know okay. where he's from i know where i know i know who this guy is i know where he's from i i, I know what he's what he was trying to do with his life before the war broke out etc so it was a bit of method acting i guess you could say well i yeah i guess i mean it, it, method acting i think is more an internal thing like what well, but I, 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 got, I cobbled together a guy that was from Indiana and, you know, wanted to go to college and be a, and um, conceivably be um, a, a lawyer or a school teacher. Um, and um, I didn't want to do that. I mean, I, I wanted to be an actor, you know, I mean, I think it's more personal than going outside yourself. I, I don't, okay. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think it is. Though. Okay. Okay. When you when you're in a role like Heat or Saving Private Ryan um, and it's so detailed, and so, in, and you're so in tune to the character. How do you shut it off? Like when you go home, uh, it, does it? Can you shut it off, or can you not? Because I've heard certain actors can't shut them off, and they just continue in that character throughout their regular day. Um. Yeah, so it, it, it can be hard sometimes. I mean, I, I had a hard time. I didn't want to shut it off after, when I did Natural Born Killers and Heat. Both, both those, uh, both those, um. Guys, I played. Um, I, I, I would see myself. I would find myself after work, kind of still doing it. You know, mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of still inhabiting them. Um, maybe making some choices that weren't so healthy. Um, um, but I didn't think of that. I didn't think of, at the time that's what I was doing. I just, I was just living. Right. Um, so, um, by and large, no, I, I could come home and. But sometimes, yeah, I, I have a hard time, but not all the time. Okay. Yeah. So you, you've worked with like incredible, incredible actors, right? So I made a list of some of the guys you worked with, Steven Seagal, De Niro, Val Kilmer, Woody Harrelson, Tom Hanks, Pacino, Stallone, Tom Cruise. Um, um, it's, a, it's a formidable list, isn't it? Yeah, you ain't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a formidable list, yeah, it is. And yeah. even when you did Private Ryan, the amount of talents, I remember I, I, my wife never saw the movie, so we watched it last night knowing I was going to interview to you today. Oh, you watched it last night, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen it a million times. My wife never watched it. And um, Did she like it? Oh, she loved it. You know, she she loved it. She and I say, you see why I can't watch today's movie because this movie is so detailed and and crosses every T and dots every I. That today's movies are just like crap compared to it. But even the talent in there, I mean, even the all the co stars were great. The the John, yeah, John Rabisi, yeah, Brian Cranston was in it. I didn't realize Brian Cranston was in it. I mean, you go down, you go down, Vin Diesel, Ed Burns, you go down the list of of talent. Do you have a who was the most fun? Jeremy Davies. Jeremy Davies um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there was uh, Dennis Farina. Jamati, Jamati's in it. Um, Paul Ted Jamati, Dan that's right. Ted Dance is in it. Yeah. Uh, you go, a whole it's, bunch of great actors. Yeah. Um, who was the, the Jewish guy? I uh, forgot his name. Adam Goldberg. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Who who did you, uh, were there guys that you bonded with well? Is it is there a bonding experience? Yeah, I, I, I there was. I got really close to Jeremy Davies. And we were we were really great friends for a long time. Um, I haven't seen him in a, a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. we're still friends, you know. But I got real close to him. Yeah. Okay. We were, and we were in Ireland and London, so you, you know you're away from home. So and we worked every day. So we, the guys make the guys make buddies with each other. What character did he play? Uh, in, he played Upham. In in Upham, uh, Ryan. He played the um, the translator. Ah, okay. Which is a very very. Um, underrated role yeah he's great in it he's yeah great. really yeah. underrated role because you you would hate him at the end <laughs> you're like you son of a he, bitch he won't go up the stairs you know yeah, yeah. but really why yeah, wouldn't go you know yeah tremendous. Then, he, then, he, then, he, then he kills the guy though who kills that's the, right tom, tom gets shot by the guy we let go that's right that's right that was a uh, fantastic yeah. movie yeah and were there any were there any guys that um were a little quirky strange all of us were a little quirky. <laughs> we're all fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, did you ever work with somebody that you couldn't stand? And you're just like, no. oh, I, I got to get through this and that's it. No, not really, no. No, nothing like that? I, okay. I had a tough time. I don't, I've had tough times, but no, I always... I, I you're always a professional? I, mean, I'm not, I just love, I, I've loved, I love my career. I, I, I love making movies, so I'm, I never let anything really get in my way. So you worked with uh, great directors, like the probably the best Hollywood's ever seen. I mean, Spielberg, Oliver Stone, Michael Mann, John Flynn. What are the major differences? Are some more like I want 
a through z this is you can't change it this is it and the others like you know use your intuition whatever you think the character will do is is, is one more quirky uh, other than um, than others the, 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 they, they, they're all unique and you know if I said I thought about it, they're all you know have things that they they you know like, um, that they're um known for I mean uh or uh, when you if you work with them you know like um Stephen doesn't like a lot of improv. Um, mm -hmm. It was just it was like kind of on the set. <coughs> um, from Oliver, with Oliver, you could, if it was within the within the uh, information that's in the scene, um, he, he wasn't against it, but it had to be smart and it had to work. Mm. Um, um, but um, they all had one thing in common, which is they knew what they wanted to make. You know, they knew the movie they wanted to make, and I had full confidence in everyone you just mentioned, and Ridley and Tony. That um, they know what the, they know, they know the movie they're making, and um, you can trust what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. they, they know how it's going to work. They know how you know. They're discovering it too as they go along, but they have a really good idea of the movie they're making. You know, all of them did. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't going to be a lot of surprises for these those gentlemen. I see. I see. Were there and more? Were there more they movies? Knew, they, they knew. They knew it to the exclusion of everyone else. Maybe. Maybe their DP knew. I don't know. But um, okay. You know. Okay. Were there more movie sets that might have been more fun, practical jokes, uh, things like that, or were they all basically really professional? Um, Natural Born Killer was a wild set. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Was, if you can get into it if you'd like. I'll, 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 no, it was just a wild set. It, was, it, was, it wasn't unlike the movie. <laughs> it was the what, set, what? The what set wasn't say? unlike the movie. It was a Really? Wild <laughs> set. The, the set took on a... One thing Oliver did, which was totally unique, was... Um, and it was unique to his 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 movie making his directing career was in between takes he played this um he played this like kind of um jungle music I mean this kind of way out music in between the takes this like tribal music it was it was a trip man and it was, mm -hmm. it was loud and, it, and he played it between between takes not every day but not uh, very often he played this music in between the takes you know it was okay a trip. and uh um Every set I worked on with the, with those with those the, the, those top gentlemen, we, those great directors we were just talking about, everyone of those sets was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in a practical joking set, but they were all fun, and everybody wanted to be there. One thing I discovered early in my career was um, the workplace on a movie set is, a, is 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 rare because it's one of the only workplaces I think you'll ever get to where everybody wants to be there. Everybody uh, wants to be at work. Good point. And, when, when I first, when I was first on the set and in the Philippines and born on the Fourth of July, I remember um, thinking, I, "This is a different. I feel differently than I than I do at the post office." You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a yeah. lot different. But um, and I, I I I finally realized what it was is that everybody wants to be here. Given that's the choice, a, that's a very home, good point. Yeah, everybody wants to be here from the PA to the first AD to the day player. To the stars um above the line below the line everybody wants to be here given a chance to go home or stay everyone will stay and that's that, that was you know that wasn't always the case on every single movie i did but mm -hmm. i'd say 99 percent of the time it was okay yeah. in natural bone killers uh rodney dangerfield was in it he had a very small part but he was in it yeah he's next door sorry that's okay um, in, in natural bone killers rodney dangerfield was in it it was a small like part yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you get to speak to him or anything like that? Or I, I got to meet him on my my first day, his last day. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what was uh, what was he like? Oh, he was just great. You know, I had no idea that they were doing "I Love Lucy." You know, that's not yeah. in the script. It doesn't say "I and I Love Lucy." Um, it didn't say that in the script. I don't recall that it did. I mean, I, I didn't know that until I saw it that mm -hmm. that was going to be. Um, they're going to send up um, the kind of that that half hour, you know, early sitcom in American. TV history. Um, that, that whole movie to me, when I saw Natural Born Killers, I was just blown out. I, I was in the movie, but I had no idea how how it was going to be. I mean, I was I was shocked at how great it was, and um, him moving between the mediums, between you know Super Eight and film, and and uh, the rear projections, and uh, um, you know the the kind of on your face, uh, too much TV, too much TV, um, all that stuff. I, 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 
it may have, I don't remember it being in a script. If it was, it wasn't predominant. And um, it was just, when I saw the movie, I was just blown away. Yeah, uh, there has never been a movie made like it since or before. It was one, it's one of a kind, clearly one of a kind. <laughs> you, you, you used some of those, you used some of that, that stuff in Nixon. If you saw Nixon with um, Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, you used, that, yeah. You used some of that stuff, but um, nothing like Natural Born Killers. Natural Killers was a, right, 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 right. He's right. never done it either. He's never done another movie like that. And no one has. Right, yeah. I mean, it is, it's, cl it's, it's it's clearly. Standalone. It's a standalone movie. It really, yeah, it really does. It's, uh, Have you seen it recently? Um, a few years back was the last time, but I remember I've, I've watched it ten times. I, I know it backwards and forwards. <laughs> I, saw, I saw I saw it a couple months ago. It, it it's still it's still wonderful. Yeah, it's a tre yeah. tremendous movie. And um, uh, was it Juliette Lewis? Is that who it is? Yes. Uh, the girl. Uh, she she knocks it out of the park because she plays a perfect woman that is psychotic, toxic, violent. It's just un unbelievable, you know. No. Um, <laughs> it was just true, true. You know, sometimes it's like I watch a role and, and I go, how do they know? How does that actor know how to do that? They, they don't come from that world. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll watch somebody and, um, like, like for, for example, uh, mm -hmm. um, in natural, in, um, uh, saving private Ryan, what was the guy's name who played Ed Burns? Mm -hmm. Right. He was supposed to be from Brooklyn, you know, and I go, I go, this guy's got to be from New York. Otherwise, there's no how it because because he just his accent and his mannerisms. And it is, his, it is from New York, isn't he? Is from yeah, Queens? he is. He's from Queens. Yeah, absolutely. Queens, right. But from there are, yeah. yeah, there are times where you watch him watch him, you go how like like somebody like yourself. Like before I, I looked you up, I was like, this guy's got to be from New York somewhere. But you were from Detroit. You know, you, you have the, sure. that that charisma. Yeah. Um, Detroit's not like New York, but it is in a way. But I was really close to New York. I mean, it, it was like um, my cousin. And when I when I when I moved to New York, I, I felt totally at home. You know? Okay. Okay. You know, um, Were there any uh, directors that you wanted to work with that you never got a chance to? Oh well, sure. Um, 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 uh, the, the Spanish director, what's his name? Um, oh yes, yeah, 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 I know. He was he was really hot in the nineties. I know he told. Yeah. I don't remember his name. Um, there's all kinds of directors. That, uh, that the one that, that the one that comes to mind where uh, for me, I don't know, obviously, but I'm going to say uh, it was Stanley Kubrick because oh, I God, yeah, that would have been um, that have been a dream come true. Did he have? Did he was his reputation really that severe? Because I understand that he was he was revered. Okay, by, right. by by everyone, by actors especially. I think. Mm. I mean, I, there was a you know. The greatest directors of, of, our, of my time, um, I think it was uh, Scorsese, Spielberg, Michael Mann, uh, but Stanley Cooper was kind of over here. I mean, he was before them, and, right? You know, but he was considered of that same, if not better, if not, you know, his movies are just wonderful, you know. Yeah, I mean, they're just yeah. Fun. I mean, Eyes, um, Wide, Eyes Wide Shut is a masterpiece. It, it's better now. It's, I saw it just recently, and I just. It's an acquired taste. I think you got to kind of watch it a couple of times before you get you it. Think so? I, that's my opinion because the first time yeah, I watched probably. it, yeah, that's probably my opinion. First time it kind of went, it did. I went to the premiere, and okay. uh, the premiere was a was was tense though. I think that's what partly it was. Um, uh, I saw Full Metal Jacket the first time. That blew me away. Yeah, it is an acquired taste. It's not. It's not like it's not. It doesn't hit you. Doesn't no, hit you right away. definitely doesn't. You got to watch it a couple of times. My father took me to see Full Metal Jacket when I was 10 years old. In Brooklyn, right? <laughs> I saw it in Brooklyn. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. <laughs> he took me to see it when I was 10 years old. And when I tell people that my father took me to see that when I was 10, they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. It was yeah, different. You should have been at that movie, yeah. No, definitely not. <laughs> but it was different back then. It wasn't like the parental guidance that you had now. And, you know, the. the my parents the, took me to see Chinatown when I was like 10 or 11. And um, the, one of the first scenes in the movie is Nicholson's talking about. Um, he's getting his hair cut and mm -hmm. he's talking about um, you fuck like a Chinaman, right? He's just, he's, <laughs> you, know, I remember, you know, he fucks his wife and he goes outside and he contemplates the moon. And I remember my mother leaning over to my dad and going, We should talk about the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> who, um, who inspired you growing up, actually, as far as acting goes? Um, well, my, my mom, my mom, um, loved movies, so, um, 
she um she had these, these movies that she loved that that would come on TV usually at, after eleven eleven thirty at night and uh, um, Beckett with um, Peter O'Toole and Richard Burton, um, the heiress with um, Montgomery Cliff and Olivia de Havilland, um, and um, Red River with uh, uh, Red R- Montgomery Cliff and um, John Wayne. And I watched those movies when I was um, a kid, you know, mm-hmm. starting around age ten through um, through seventeen when I went to college. Um, and mom just loved movies. I mean, Beckett was her favorite movie, um, and that's how I got into, um, you know, movies, you know, it was through my mom. Yeah. And uh, one year, I, I think I was like 12, we watched The Wizard of Oz and uh, I was blown away by The Wizard of Oz. It mm-hmm. blew my mind. And um, um, when, it was, when it was over, um, 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 I didn't know much. I asked my mom, I said, um, when are we going to see this again? She goes, well, it comes on once a year. And I said, okay. When it when it's on next year, can I be in it? And she said, "What do you mean?" I said, well, <laughs> "I want to be in it, Mom. How can I be in it? I'll, I'll even be one of the monkeys." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I didn't know what a movie was. I didn't know that they filmed them. I must have been I must have been like maybe eight or nine. Um, I didn't know it was a camera that had been shot. And she said, "Tommy, they already made this movie." I went, and it, she realized I didn't understand what she was talking about. She explained to me that the movies were made years before with a camera and it filmed it and it made a film and it could oh uh, you thought it was live all the time yeah i thought i, I thought yeah. it was about especially it was live because of all the the more um, musical type things you know yeah and, yeah yeah and, that uh, would make sense she sure. explained to me what a movie was you know mm-hmm. that this was a, and they made it in 1930 something or other right <laughs> and I the tech technicolor i said where are all these people and she went they're probably all dead baby <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 the movie that did that that did that that did that for me was um oh god the one with uh gene wilder uh no, frankenstein no 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 no. it was a children's movie uh the, the candy factory willie wonka's uh, willie yeah that's it willie wonka and the children that was the one that did it for me like that like i watched it and i was like yeah, blown great. away like wow yeah uh, it's like so big right it's so yeah wild. Yeah, so, I, not, I, not, so not of our world. Yeah, like, no, nothing around us can remind me of it, you know, like that. What do you think of remakes? Do you think uh, do you enjoy remakes, or do you think they should leave the classics alone? What's your opinion? Um, I think a great remake is. You know, I just want to. I'm easy in so far as I just want to be entertained. So if they can oh, take okay. a, if they can take a movie like um like something like, like uh, I think is should never be touched. But the Godfather, no one ever remake that. But let's say right. someone did, and they could make do it to, to, to take on it and keep the um the integrity of the first one and, and do something different. I'd be all for it. Yeah, right, right, right. You uh, have a big brain. You got to have a big brain to do a remake of something great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd, creative I'd, brain, creative brain. You know? I'd rather see something original. But I I understand. I I, I hear what you're saying. With it, did you ever? Do you, are there any roles that you regret turning down? That you're like, oh, I should have fucking took that. Um, not, off, not off the top of my head, I can't. Really, that. really, okay, all right. Yeah. Or, or roles that you were offered that you don't regret, but that you didn't. That so, like, if somebody said, "Oh, Tom Sizemore was supposed to do that role," and and so and so got it, was there anything like that? Um. Off the top of my head, John, I can't think. Of, oh. I'm sure I can't think of anything. Else okay, all right. Because I, I remember uh, listening to, because um, you brought up the Godfather, and I remember listening to who played Sonny in the Godfather. Oh, James Con. James Con. He was on Howard Stern, and he turned down Superman. Apparently, a lot and, of guys turned down Superman. Apparently, I heard. Really? Yeah, he wasn't the only one. Someone, a couple other people did. Oh, okay. Christopher Reeve wasn't the first choice. Really? Yeah, I think I, I about that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, apparently Marlon Brando wanted him to do the movie because he was in the movie. And, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. They're friends. They were friends. Uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I've heard they were yeah. really good friends. But all right, so let's let's get uh, uh, back to you. Let's see. Die Hard was turned down by um, like six guys before Bruce got it. Really? I'm not, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 well, you know, you don't know what's going to be. That was Bruce's first or second movie after Moonlighting. And um, right, maybe third or fourth choice, you know. And of course, he should have played it all along. But mm-hmm. Anyway, moving on. 
You did three um, war movies. Well, you did probably did more, but you did three famous war movies. So you did Saving Private Ryan, Black Hawk Down, Pearl Harbor, the three that stand out. Mm-hmm. Which one did you, which one do you think uh, was the most accurate and which one do you, uh, are they are the most proud of, if you will? Um, I'm proud of all three of them. Okay. Um, yeah, um, from what I, I, I've never been in a war. Um, from what I've been told and meeting some of the guys like in Black Hawk Down, the, several of the, the young men who were there on October 3rd, 1993, were there when we shot the movie or mm. visit the set. Um, and um, that Black Hawk Down may have been a bit more um, accurate in how we fight contemporary warfare is fought. But, you know, um, the anatomy of the anatomy of a battle. Um, mm. but, but, I don't know if it was more, but it, World War II is a long time ago. I mean, right. uh, our, our D-Day, um, I, I've been told this also that our D-Day from some of the two gentlemen who were there that day were visited the set when we were doing it. And they said it was eerily accurate, you know? So, um, you know, they're, they're both, um, you know, fantastic, you know, um, great movies. Both of them were great movies. I, I, I enjoyed doing them both an enormous amount and a bit more fun doing Black Hawk down only because it was, I didn't work 58 straight days in a row. Oh, um, okay. We had days off in there, but um, in Black Hawk down, I worked like, like three weeks and a week off and then um, two weeks and two weeks off. And it was just, it wasn't the same by Ryan. The whole company, I think, did the movie somewhat tired. Wow. Which, which, which hurt, which, which helped, which helped. I was going to say, would, yeah. Would help, would... They were probably tired when they were doing this shit, you know. Right, of course. They had to be exhausted. Yeah. yeah. But um, we worked 58 consecutive days as a company. Okay. So it is one question that I, I wanted to ask you, which is it just, it's kind of a strange question, but in the movie Heat, which is, as far as I'm concerned, like one of the greatest uh, bank robbery movies and, and shootout scenes ever. In the in the main bank robbery scene, you guys walk into the bank, but you don't have the masks on. And then, as when you start the robbery, you put the masks on. And I that movie was so detailed that couldn't have been that had to be scripted. What what was the purpose of walking in, showing your faces, and then putting the masks on? Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember. Um, because I, I when I, at the, the end of the scene, I go all the money. I go against the pillar, take my mask off, and put my sunglasses on, and walk right. out of the thing. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I, I, I would be remiss in telling you why it was done that way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because you remember, but it was Michael Mann, so I'm sure there was a very specific reason why. Yeah, it had to be. Remember. I can't recall. Cool. Yeah, because that that crew was supposed to be like real professionals, so every detail was. Was it well, oh, that movie was as deep. I mean, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a more detailed di- oriented director than Michael Mann. Okay, All I mean, right. really would. Um, he's just absolutely wonderful. So, he writes, too, he writes all the movies. Oh, he writes, really? He writes his movies and directs his movies. Okay, I mean, he's there from the when it's an idea all the way through and cuts it. And I mean, he's I think he's a more present filmmaker than almost everybody. Oh, okay. Okay. So my, my brother would kill me if I didn't ask you this question. So um, what was it like working with Sylvester Stallone? Oh, I, look, I was, um, it was my second job ever. Yeah. Uh, 26, 20, yeah, 26. Um, he was like working with Hollywood to me. It was right, just right, right. on a site. And he was extremely nice to me when um, we shot, we started shooting the movie in, in New Jersey at Rahway State Prison in New Jersey. That's and right. then we went to Hollywood to shoot the interior of the prison, which was in um, over here in um, on the um, over on Washington Boulevard, where they, they, it would be called. It wasn't Columbia, but, it, but I think it was Columbia's former lot. It was a lot over there on Washington Boulevard, and we shot shot over there for like two and a half months. And um, he was dating who he married, Jennifer Flavin, and um, she brought her sister to the set one day. Anyway, her name is Julie, and. I liked her when she, like, when we started to kind of see each other a little bit. So I got to hang out with him, you know, for, um, really, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I went to the, um, the polo, the polo yard with him. I went to, um, I went to a hockey game with him. Um, the LA Kings with Gretzky on the team. Um, it was really great. Um, um, it could have been any better. I stopped over his house a few times. Really? 
when you when you went back home and told your friends, big pink, big pink was little pink, big pink was a big house, and little pink was out in Malibu. Um, it was um, for a young guy like me at the time. It was like I had to pinch myself sometimes. Uh, yeah, right. Following, following the slide up the up the in the Hollywood Hills, I'm following the slide <laughs> with Julie Flavin next to me. It's like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? I can't, you know. Uh, did your friends back home in Detroit think you were full of shit when you said you yeah, hung out with? They did. They did. They did. They did. <laughs> they, did they really? Yeah, I, I had to take pictures. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's 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 funny. Um, Mickey Rourke. Because you worked with him yeah. too, right? Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's a great actor. Oh, what was it like working on that set? Because that was more of a action, funny, comedy kind of deal. That um, was uh, Holly Davidson and the Marlboro Man. Yeah, it was. Um, it was what you just said. It was an action, funny. Um, it was. Um, you know, just how it looked. It was. Um, Mickey was. Uh, I didn't know him well. I just met him then. He he uh, he wasn't. Um, I don't think in retrospect that he was excited to be there. But you couldn't tell. I mean, he was great. He and Don were great. Um, Simon Windsor was a director, uh, a strange gentleman you know, who directed the, um, the, the 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 movie about um, the whales. Um, well, anyway. Oh, Simon, oh, okay. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Willie. The, what yeah. The, yeah. 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 did them. Um, kid, the, the the kids uh, <clears throat> kids movie. Yeah. 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 It was fun. Um, I think there was some problem one day with um. We had mustaches, or people had to shave, or something. We didn't do it, and we had to come back and do it over again. But it was great. It was great. It was, it was the beginning of my career. You know, there's a scene in that movie where I, I I don't know if it's Don Johnson or Mickey Rourke who has to fight this huge guy in a bar, and that's that he was a professional. He was a real professional wrestler, Big John Stud. Oh really? I don't remember yeah. that. You don't oh, remember yeah, I do that? remember now. I remember now. Was yeah. that Mickey? Was Probably. That Mickey? Yeah, I haven't seen the movie in a very long time, but. Um, so he had a fight and I actually he was a very, very famous professional wrestler. And uh, and I actually was able to interview his son uh, and come on. And, and we actually talked about the set because uh, according to his son, he died early on. But uh, according to his son, he wanted to continue doing some movies because he was in a couple of them. And uh, but it didn't he work out to, that way. Johnson, I want to continue to do. Yeah, he wanted to continue to do movies, but he, he actually died too, too soon. You know, oh. he was a huge, huge human being. But um, OK, let's see. So there's, there's some rumors that that came about, like the in uh, I'll I'll ask you um, when you were on Saving Private Ryan. Supposedly that there was a deal struck with you and Steven Spielberg that you had to stay clean and sober, or you were out. Was that accurate? Yeah, kind of accurate. Yeah. Okay, it's kind of accurate. And then also, I, I did the movie. I finished. The yeah, movie. obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if he's the kind of guy that would give you a second chance or not. You know. Uh, I didn't want to find out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also there was another rumor about, uh, what was it? Um, in Natural Born Killers, we actually swapped out. Uh, you were in a scene with the girl in the hotel room, the hooker in the hotel room that you strangle. And mm -hmm. you actually, the, the rumor had it that you actually swapped out the fake cocaine for real cocaine. It's, a, it's true or no? Myth, no. Oh, true. myth. Okay, okay, myth. All right, so bullshit. All right. Bullshit. So uh, you you had, I mean, you know, you had some problems with substance abuse, mm. but you said that from the research I, 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 I did, you, you, it's been your entire life, like since you're 15, from what I understand. Is that accurate? Uh, well, not like that. Yeah, like, yeah, well, I smoke pot when I was 15, but I'm... No, that's nothing. I mean, <laughs> no, really. Substances, but I'm... Who didn't? Um, it was a much bigger problem when I was an adult, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sober now. I've been sober three years and change. Um, you know, it was hard. It was difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could only imagine. So, mm -hmm. what about the, you know, the benefits of being a Hollywood star? You know, um, nightlife. Uh, do you, do you, do it? Did you get things for free? Did, did, did you get pulled up by the cops and the cops were like, oh, go ahead, don't worry about it. You're Tom Sizemore. Where uh, did you go into uh, restaurants and they were like, "Oh no, we eat eat for free. It's it's on us, your Tom Sizemore." You know, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of eating for free business. Maybe for Jack Nicholson, there is um, people like that. But um, the 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 advantages of being well known or famous, whether you know, were great. And um, sometimes it still happens, and it's, it's terrific. You know, it's just, people like you for what you did. You know, right. This is nothing wrong with it. What about the, I, I got to ask you because I mean, you know, I'm a regular dude. I'm surrounded by regular dudes all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, most regular dudes don't do well with women. 
what's it what's it like when you have your pick of women because you're a superstar? I wouldn't know. I'm not a superstar. <laughs> yeah, be a holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I took full um full advantage of it. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. <laughs> well, there really isn't. Are you kidding? That's why I'm asking. I, wi- I, I like wish I, I had that if problem. Like, if, you like, if you like girls. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, in right. Your, your 30s and 40s, um, you got to exercise some restraint. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't always do that. <laughs> no, I could, I could, I, you know, and um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, um, there's a statistic that's out now that uh, I think, I think the Washington Post did it actually, it was a, a survey. Mm-hmm. Um, that um, men 30 and under, uh, one out of three have um, either never had sex or haven't had sex in the past year. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the amount yeah. of, yeah, and the, the amount of virgins 30 and under has tripled this, in the last true? decade. Yeah, absolutely. You could look it up. I, I, don't, yeah. know. I, never, I don't know anything about this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, what now? 30 and under do what? Uh, men 30 and under today. Um, the statistic is one out of every three either is a virgin or never or haven't had hasn't had sex within in a year, and um, also thirty three percent of the men are are, are the virgins or, or don't really that, have sex sexless yeah yeah and um, and the amount of of uh, the amount of virgins has tripled in the last ten years for, for men under thirty. Um, it, it's odd to me because I grew up where that's what you did. You chase girls. Right. Um, but it seems like the new generation get organized really fast. It's like, oh, oh yeah. when I was 14. I was looking to get it done. <laughs> yeah. Man, <laughs> man, it was the same way. I was 15. Yeah. yeah. I was 15 years old. I was, was 14. When I got done. I think I was 60. I was 16, but, um, I was trying to for a while. You know? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I just was with the girl that was the neighborhood, you know, run around and it was mm-hmm. my turn. That was really it. No, but I, I um, tried to get with her too, but I couldn't get to her. <laughs> I had to wait on a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, it, it's it's a different world now. The young kids uh, seem to be, um, you know, playing video games and um, don't have masculine role models, and uh, they uh, smoke a lot of weed. And I find and, that really, I find that odd as fuck. Yeah, so, it is. It's very, like, um, it's very, it's very odd. Were and are important. Yeah, in my, in my my life and my kids' lives, it's a driving people, force. I got two seventy year olds that are not falling under that banner. Um, good, 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 <laughs> good, good, good. Um, that's true, huh? The, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. It's it's unfortunate, and um, there's plenty of. I wonder why that is. I, I mean, you just gave me some, but I wonder why that is. Well, there's a combination there's a lot of, of things. people. Yeah, there's a combination of things. One, is, is this in America or is this in the world over? No, in the United States, any Western world, UK, United States, Australia, things mm-hmm. like that. You know, um, there's a couple of things. One, uh, social media. Uh, that that that's difficult because uh, women tend to think that women tend to see uh, men that are, are very high valued, and they're able to. Uh, they have a greater choice now. Women have a greater choice. You know, a, you know, a guy. If you're 19 and hot and you live in Kentucky, you can meet a guy that has money and lives in Miami and he could fly you out. You, you know, you're not going to um, hang out with the guy who works as a waiter in Kentucky. Station over there. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it's a different world now. And um, and uh, guys don't have, you know, uh, masculine role models. And listen, you know, guys like girls like guys that are rough around the edges and young guys aren't really rough to, you know. My first fist fight, I think I was six years old, right? And you know, I, it doesn't it doesn't happen anymore. You know, the girl, mm-hmm. you know, you know, it's very, uh, it's very, it, you know, it's kind of a strange. It's, it's yeah, weird. it's it's a change. It's a, it's a, it's it's a it's a complete change because there were there were actors that had reputations that were sincere tough guys like um, you know James Caan had a reputation where he you know or. Um, Going back further was uh, it was White Heat. What's Robert Mitchum? Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of them that had reputations that they would throw down quick. You know. work. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, he was a fighter for a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, it's Sean completely Penn. Sean Penn. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. Played, he played a drop of a hat. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was, but it doesn't uh, doesn't really happen too much anymore. So when no, you were it's no, it's it's unfortunate. It really is. Shadow the Booth is kind of uncommon, isn't he? Yes. I like, I like him. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him as an actor. He was on, yeah, so do I. And he was on a podcast, actually, and he, he actually talked about that recently. Really? Um, yeah, about how he doesn't give a shit about what people think of him or anything like that. And he's just, a, you know, so on and so forth. But was there a clique of actors that you hung out with and went out with and had nightlife and had fun when uh, when you were in your prime in the 90s? Yeah, I mean, it was a um, loose, it was a loose click, but um, um, Chris Penn, God rest his soul. Oh, um, right, right. John McGinley, um, Danny Baldwin, um, Michael Madsen, uh, Elias Cateus, <sighs> myself, uh, Scott Silver, Brian Kessner. Uh, some of those guys were not, in a, it was like a, a large group, and some were more together than others. But yeah, all a bunch of the a bunch of the guys who started to do well when I did, um, we all knew each other from New York. Mm -hmm. and you guys were like the rat pack of your time yeah maybe you know the monkey bar michael wincott um that whole epoch was great um everybody was there you know okay okay Uh, Uh, a restaurant a restaurant nightclub that jack nicholson opened in the early 90s and was on was it called the monkey bar it's it's a it was an unbelievable place and it was open i think to the 97 98 okay okay and um, it was open all night Oh, very nice. Jack very. wanted to stay. Um, it was a great place. And were you the one leaving early or just closing it down? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was a great place, you know. Yeah. I ate there. Warren Beatty ate there. Wow. Um, it was just a great place, you know. That's and, amazing uh, that you were around. Madonna ate there. Madonna ate there. Um, it was okay. a great place. Okay. And it was kind of replaced by Ago um, later, in the early 2000s. Yeah, it was great. Great supper clubs. Uh, is there still nightlife like that? Where uh, no, I mean isn't. there might be. I mean, yeah, there is. I'm not part of it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, in the movie True Romance, mm-hmm. um, that was written by. Was that written by Tarantino? Quentin. Uh, um, Quentin. Yeah. 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 Uh, but he didn't direct it, right? He sold the script. Tony, Tony Scott directed it. Okay. okay. And. It ended up in the hands of um, Quinn wrote it, and I think he, Don Murphy and Jane Hampshire got it. I'm not sure. I mean, Don and Don, Don and Don and Jane got Natural Born Killers, and they did it with Oliver. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but Quentin wrote it in the script that we did, and um, the script that you see in the movie is Quentin's script. Okay. Did you ever get a chance to work with uh, him no, as director? I almost did. I almost okay. did on, on the first one, Reservoir Dogs. I was Steve was shaming me for that part, Mister um, Part that he played in uh, Blonde, Mister Pink or whatever, Mister Pink, Blonde. Pink, 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 Pink. Pink. Yeah, um, um, it, it, I had to read it numerous times. It, it was Steve for me, and um, so it was a, that was a, oh, that's a bitter loss. That you talk about, yeah, that was a bitter loss. Okay. Yeah, okay, that was a real bitter loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he would have been perfect for that role. Are you kidding? Yeah, that was, he was yeah. great too. He was uh, great too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Steve Buscemi is really good. Mm-hmm. Um, now I understand that Tarantino hates that the, the movie that that what the way it came out, True Romance. I understand he never actually watched it. I, I didn't know that. I, I, yeah. I think he heard that. Yeah, he doesn't like it. No, I found out that he actually never watched it. He refuses he to watch Nashville, it. He didn't like Nashville More Killers either, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, uh, he, he, he finds that aberrant as well, I believe. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I love Quinn's work, man. I, oh, I it's unbelievable. It's he's fantastic. He's just, he's just fantastic, he's talented, and does yeah. Great and they're, yeah. small, they're still great they're, you know they're, they're still great oh yeah you, you could watch them and they're still fantastic I watched Django Unchained last night it's, it's, I love that movie man yeah that's I a great movie I love that movie I've seen it many times it's, it's um it's hot it's one of my favorites now of his, of his. yeah I love, love that movie I, yeah I love it. I was a little disappointed. Leonardo in his, was in his, so good in that movie DiCaprio was so good in that movie oh movie. they they robbed him. he wasn't even he's not, so good in that movie. it's one of his best performances I believe why? Why is it and, that um, Jamie um, Fox? They just oh. they, Christopher Wentz. Those guys are giving it a clinic, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. great. You know? Why did it take so long for DiCaprio to win an Oscar? He's had such a charmed career, believe me. Maybe it seems so charmed. What do you mean? I mean he's had a charmed career. You know, he's got Steven Spielberg does his movies. Quentin Tarantino. Um, he's, he's, he's ever since he did uh, and Marty, and ever since he did the um, his very first movie, This Boy's Life, with them. Um, Bob yeah. De Niro. I mean, he's had a, just a charmed career. Maybe there's some jealousy. I don't know. Ah, okay, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. He didn't. He didn't so go through handsome. the grind. He's handsome. He's undeniably gifted. Right. You know. So yeah. 
Okay, yeah, that that could be. That good could be uh, yeah, series of beautiful girlfriends, ah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. right, good. right. Yeah, abs- <laughs> absolutely. Um, what was it like when you worked with uh, Wesley Snipes? Because you were in Passenger Fifty Seven. Yeah, that was great, man. It was a great time. Wesley was in a great mood. Um, we're in Orlando, Florida, I've never been there before. It was great. It was great. It was great fun. Yeah. So you yeah. were you were nominated for 23 awards, but never for uh, an Almost. Oscar. Almost. I understand. A couple times. Yeah. It didn't happen. Does that, that ever, does really that, sucks. it bothers you? Sucks. Yeah. It's not yeah. bothering me. It's, it just kind of sucks. I yeah. Like, I thought I was going to get it a couple times. I thought I was going to get it a couple times, get the nomination, but I didn't. What, um, what movies did you think you were going to get it for? I'm Ryan and Black Hawk Down. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I, was, I didn't think it. I was told. Ah, insiders, you know. Right. Time. Okay. Um, it didn't happen. Uh, Val Kilmer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and he. Great actor. Yeah, he. Great actor. He's kind of been kind of. Huh? You know, doesn't do much anymore. He's sick. Is he really? Well, I mean, he lost his voice. Get I, think- I did not know that. Oh my god! Well, yeah, how did he do that? He had cancer. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh my god! Cancer of the, the um, larynx, um, bad. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. I'm sorry to hear that. Had, wow! In, in, the, in the Top Gun, um, the um, sequel, um, they did some engineering. Um, I think his son may have. I don't. I don't. I, I, I don't want to say uh, it may have been his voice all the way. I don't know, but um, he has trouble. Um, he has trouble um, making enough noise. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh wow, okay. That That's uh, yeah, that does suck, man. That really does, man. Oh. He's, a, he's a wonderful actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, how if you don't mind me asking, and if you want to mm-hmm. skip it, we could skip it. How uh, how hard did the uh, the, the the narcotics and substance abuse go? You said you were smoked weed when you were fifteen, but. What was what was the drug of choice, if you will? Um, um, you know, um, sex, really. But um, um, did you say sex? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the drug get me to sex. <laughs> um, that was the end, that was the end game. Um, was the sex really? Um, so it was, you know, probably crystal meth there for a while. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a hard one to, to we kick. Can't, we can't really do heroin and have a lot of sex, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. You're sleeping. Yeah, yeah, you're sleeping. Well, <laughs> I had a I, I had an we uncle that. Yeah, yeah. What's that? I had an uncle that was a, a heroin addict, actually. You know, but uh, he died very young. The drowsy. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and did you? Uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I I don't want to. Uh, did you did you go right to injecting it? Because I know you could snort. No, it I never well. injected it. I never injected it. Oh, I never, okay. never injected the drug in my life. Oh, okay, ever. okay, ever, okay. ever, ever. Yeah, just, nothing but me. It's um, heroin is on oh, a big increase. It. Oh, you oh, you saw? Oh, I didn't know that because I thought you snorted it. Okay. Was meth speed? No, 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 heroin. Oh, I, I did that briefly. Um, you, you can smoke it. I smoked it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you can snort it, you can inject it, you can smoke it, you know. Yeah, yeah. All bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Um, you're tense. Heroin is on a big rise uh, because of the um, the uh, the Xanax and the Valiums and the so on and so forth. And well, the, the fentanyl is the, the fentanyl is the new. Yeah, boom. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah, know what yeah, yeah. I don't even know what that shit's about. I mean, I I um I know it's a hundred times or five hundred times stronger than heroin. That would seem insane to even fuck with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, From what I understand, um, De Niro actually helped you uh, at one point. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. 1997, and I stayed sober for quite some time. Okay. Had it? What did? How did he do? What did he do to help you? Got me into a treatment center. Okay. Intervened. Took me uh, there. Okay. All right. And in Arizona. Uh, in Arizona. Uh, and is he that kind of guy, or you guys were just good friends? I think he's that kind of guy. He's that kind of guy. Okay, we were right. good friends then. Yeah. All right. And you, it was, it was, it was. I needed it. <clears throat> ninety six. Ninety six. Okay. All right. And how long did you stay sober for during that time? Oh, seven years. 
Oh, that's years. great. Yeah. And you had a good run then. Yeah. And I never had any real epically long fuck ups. It's just that when I fucked up, I got arrested. So it's, yeah. Years, you know? Yeah. 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 You did a little bit of time in prison too. Um, yeah. Um, did, uh, how difficult was that? Did they uh, pinpoint you because you were a celebrity or did they keep no, you isolated? I, um, what I went to prison for is um, I went to prison for possession. Um, and um, my probation was violated. And today, today you wouldn't even get arrested for it. You wouldn't mm. get arrested for um, paraphernalia. You wouldn't get, it's not, it's, it's not um, a felony anymore um, in Los Angeles or in California. So you, you, possession is not a crime. It was a misdemeanor, and it's not a felony. Really? Yeah, I think it's almost a country over. Wow, things have changed drastically. It's good. Um, yeah. So at the time when I it was, it was just I went to prison for using drugs, which is um, I felt at the time I, I thought it was crazy, and um, I they don't even do it anymore. Right. Um, but um. I didn't think they'd do it to me. I just thought, I just don't think they would do it to me, um, which is why I kept, um, I was on probation and I couldn't get off probation because I would fail these tests and stuff. So, um, you know, it was just, it all happened to me in my early forties. I'd never been arrested before. And all of a sudden I'm in this fucking shit storm. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I didn't know where I was. You know, I didn't know the, I didn't know the parameters. Um, it happened it kind of, it seemed like it happened like a slow car crash, but it, it was happened over a couple of years. Uh, I just didn't, I didn't know the rules. I, I really didn't. I, I should have known one thing. They want me to stop doing this. I should stop. But right. um, for, for, because they want me to, but also because I need to stop. So sure. I was going to stop it anyway. I knew that. Um, and I did, but I, I didn't stop in time. So um, it wasn't very long. It was 16 months with half. I spent um, two months in county jail and um, another um, six and a half months in, you know, um, reception and then prison so it, i was i was away for like nine months what was going on in my head was far worse than what was going on around me you know what i was worried about happening or could, you know my imagination was far worse mm -hmm. than what actually happened nothing happened it was um i ended up learning how to play pinochle <laughs> i'm not shooting you i learned how to yeah. play pinochle and i still that was, like it. that was my <laughs> father's favorite card game he used to play twice a week and i started doing burpees with the other guys and i came out i was in really good shape and i knew how to play pinochle that's what i ended up doing there <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> and yeah I didn't, have any, I didn't have any fist fights i didn't have any trauma or you know um sex capades with um you know female staff or men or nothing like that happened and, and mm -hmm. same thing like that it was um you know i learned my lesson i didn't go back <laughs> yeah fuck that i don't blame you man Shit. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't nearly as lurid or as hard as I had anticipated or my imagination conjured up. It was, it was, you know, I, I, it went well for me, I guess you want to say it was, it was, it was, it was no, no events happened. And I, I went in and I did, I did it and I got out. Yeah. I never I was on parole and I passed all the tests. I got clean and I stayed clean. And I oh, fucked up again a little bit later and then I got clean again now. Okay. Well, well what's, what's the trigger for you? You know, you seem to be doing well now, but what was the uh, what's the what was the trigger when you kind of just because I, I I look good now, or it doesn't mean I'm not doing it. I'm able to do it and not be all fucked up. Okay, for the most part, um, a lot of people are. I think people ex expect you to be like some monster or some shit. Um, but um, um, depression and um, depression is the key, is the main one, and then um. Good things too, like um, like some good things started happening. I got a bunch of money, and um, want to make this good time even better. So I'll put mm. this, uh, you know, make it um, the good times to the second degree, third degree, fourth degree. That I was part of the problem. Okay, okay. And, and just simple, pl simple, plain depression, boredom. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you went, you went on uh, celebrity 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 rehab with Doctor Drew. I like Doctor Drew. Uh, yeah, I like I like him too. He's he's very intelligent. He's fun to listen to because they used yeah, to have a, a radio. TV. I wish I had been on TV, but I needed to go. Okay, but yeah. you did. Did you do that? Um, it, was it just willingly, or did it was a no, court order? It, had, well, it had to be willingly in the end. But no, right. I didn't do it willingly. No, 
No. It, was, it was brought to me and my my immediate family, you know, wanted me to do it. You know, I didn't want to do it. Okay. All and right. then they, they pay. Oh, okay. He paid, paid well. Oh, all right. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> you know, because you get paid to go do that. <laughs> yeah, but you were, you were, from what I understand. You usually pay a lot of money to go do it. Right? Yeah, I mean, right, right. And this was, was like. I went to a treatment center a few times. It cost 50 grand for three days, three, for a month. Wow. I'm not going to say which one, but yeah. Um, no, you don't have to say it. That's but usually you don't, you don't get paid. And um, they go, we got to pay. <laughs> that's unbelievable. That's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, it's, that, that's an uncommon, uncommonly large number. Wow. Um. It's not, what was, by and large, not that expensive. You know? What was it like uh, being on that celebrity rehab with Heidi Fleiss? Because that was your ex girlfriend or wife or something mm-hmm. like that, wasn't it? Ex girlfriend. I never, never been married to her. Okay. Married once with uh, Maeve Quinlan. Um, 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 uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't cool, but um, it was brief. Right. Yeah. What was uh What was the experience like being on? That you know, reality TV because that was like that was like I didn't just, like it. Yeah, it sucks. I, I hate <laughs> I reality like shows. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it help at all? Or? Yeah, I, I I stayed clean for a long time actually. Okay, um, and I got paid um a really large number. I thought it was an uncommonly large number for something like that. But um, that really was when I was there. I wasn't thinking about that though. I was thinking about I was thinking it was a shitty experience. But I focused on Drew. And uh, Bob and I made it work for myself. All right, good, good. Better forget about the TV element, and, right? Uh, and the Heidi element, and just focus on myself. Yeah, yeah that that has to be difficult um, when you're doing a reality show and cameras are in your face constantly. You know, they were pretty uh, cool. The, the, that camera crew was pretty cool, and they tried, uh, to, they tried to lay off of us. They're oh, there. okay. They tried. They were they were they were decent. They were they were courteous. Was I'm, there? I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure they always are. I only done that one thing. Right. But, right, right. Uh, that camera crew was. Um, cognizant of what was going on and they were hip when you watched it when you watched the actual show was there editing clips to make you look worse than you watched like i only watched a little bit of it here and there i didn't i didn't i didn't didn't cue it up to watch it okay um but what you see is what happened there was no retakes there was no oh okay script given to you that's what happened Mm -hmm. and in that in that that respect it's completely 100 percent genuine it's okay. authentic. That's what happened. No one was told what to do or redid, redid anything. Whenever did redid anything, whenever nothing was ever scripted, that's what you got. Some things yeah. were taken out when it got too, 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 or uh, whatever, you know, okay. too loud or lurid or whatever the fuck it was. And how long, how long of a, how long of an experience was, was that? Together, it was, um, was that? How long of an experience was that? How long was it, that it was, um, project? Um, three weeks. It was um, three weeks, I believe it was, for um, celebrity rehab, and then three weeks for sober house. So it was six weeks. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm almost certain that's what it was. Okay. It was three weeks of celebrity rehab, and then you were we were down we were down a week, a dark darker week. Yeah, mm-hmm. like eight days, and a lot of people slipped. Then I didn't. I, I went from celebrity rehab. I went to um, Las Asinas Recovery Center. Um, I, I didn't go home. You could go home. You could go home for those eight days, and I, I thought if I went home, I might use. So I stayed in the hospital setting, and um, they were cool about that. And, and I, had, I could go there, and I went from there to sober living, to the to our sober living house in the show. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm certainly glad that you're doing well now because uh, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, uh, well, a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. I know uh, mm-hmm. you know it's time consuming, but. The uh, the money you make on on these on these movies, what when you when you're doing Private Ryan, he what kind of money do you you always hear of you know the twenty million for De Niro and the twenty million for Pacino and these crazy numbers and so on and so forth. But somebody of your caliber, like you and uh, you know Ed Burns or you know so on and so forth, what uh, what kind of money was to be made back then? <laughs> You, you don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Uh, um, probably, um, probably more than you think, and probably less than some other people think. Um, okay. Um, you know, seven figures. Okay. But not too far above that. I or, see. Okay. So. You know um, what I mean. Yeah. Okay. The M word. Right. 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 The, the M word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the M word. The IT word. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right, all right. Because when you said that, uh, no, 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 when you're twenty, you know, right? No, when you're that kind of number. Uh, when you say, because uh, when you said that there, some of the rehabs were fifty grand for three days, I'm like, wow. Three, no, 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 fifty grand for a month. I oh, like, I'm sorry. Fifty oh. grand every thirty days. Oh, uh, I see. I see. Okay, okay, okay. okay. It's which is still a lot of money. Still oh yeah, that's an uncommonly large number too. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Very, very highest, cool. I think that was the, the, the most expensive treatment center out here. Okay. At the time. Well, I'm glad. It, I'm glad it worked, and I'm glad you you're clean, man. Because now you're teaching, right? Yeah, I really like it. And um, what kind of classes? I obviously you know you're doing acting teaching, but anything specific? Oh no, I'm, I'm teaching. Um, teaching real estate class. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. I got some really good, I got 27, 27 great, great young actors and I'm um, not all young, but um, I got 27 serious actors and um, you know, some are more experienced than others. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to probably go online because I have a lot more people that want to study with me mm. and I just can't do it. I don't have the, you know, the, 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 the I don't, I can't do it. I just can't do it. Right. Right. Um, right. So um. I'm just teaching acting, you know, how, how do you, uh, how do you take a script, break it down and uh, mm -hmm. get these characters come off the page and into your body. And what, what kind of scripts are they? Are they more like, uh, like when you went to school, like uh, the fellows yeah, or is it more plays, plays, you know, plays, okay. Sam Shepard, David Mamet, um, um, Danny DeBussy, um, uh, I forget the name of that playwright, John Patrick Shanley, um, you know, contemporary playwrights. Okay. All right. That now, now work. About people now, and, okay. Um, back to 25, 30 years, and 40 years to now, kind of thing. All right, two more questions, and I'm going to let you go because I know it's so it's mm -hmm. been a while. Um, what about uh, Tarantino was on Joe Rogan, and he believes that Hollywood is a cycle, and he believes from what from the interview I saw, I don't know if he's changed his mind. He believes that it's going to come back, like the great movies and the talent and the whatnot is going to come back. That it's a cycle. What do you think? Um, I hope he's right. I I I don't know. Okay. All right. Yeah, I hope I, he's right too, man. I, don't know. I, I I really hope he's right. Yeah. It's, it's such a rich world that is, we're no longer doing. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, I miss it. Yeah, it's baffling. It's baffling, man. Even even for just a, a person like me who used to love going to the movies, you know, for, you know, grew up going to the movies, you know. Um, yeah, I love the movies too, man. I, I, yeah, the most, the most like most fun thing I did. Absolutely, I was a young person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember when I went to see the Deer Hunter day for Thanksgiving. Wow. I, I, I remember, you know, going to see Apocalypse Now. You know, the day after Christmas. Yeah. These days, you know. Yeah. Great. Big part of my life, my especially my young life. Yeah, yeah. I, um, it helped make me into the person I became. Yeah, because it, it, you know. Look, I was watching uh, Saving Private Ryan last night, and I said, I've never been in war, but at least you had a movie that showed you what it was like and showed you that you should be grateful for what you have, for what these men have done for you. And they, that doesn't exist anymore. You know, it you seems know it like, sucks. yeah, it, it really it really does. It's, it's unfortunate. You know, there were some morals and values that I internalized because of movies, right? Um, Absolutely. You know, I... Uh, you know, j uh, putting a girl's jacket on or uh, or opening a car door for a woman that I got from a movie, you know, um, I mean, dear, the, the, the dear hunter, Robert De Niro's character. I want to be a guy like that. I want to be a guy like that. You can look to have, you know, he's going to come through for you. A, a, a rock of Gibraltar like this. Yeah. I mean, right. this guy's qualities. I mean, I, I remember thinking that when I was a kid. Yeah. I saw yeah. the movie at 16. Right. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. It was, uh, it was on, you know, yeah. I mean, they don't, these, these young people don't get to do that. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, they don't get to do it. And I, I think there's, I think if there was some movies like that now, maybe, maybe, maybe the kids, the young generation today wouldn't feel as entitled uh, because like there's nobody showing them this is what it took to be, to, for society be, to come, to become what it's like now. It took men to defend and fight off the enemy in order for you to have what you have now. And like I said, even though I was never in war, a movie like Saving Private Ryan taught me that. Right. Right. And uh, it just doesn't exist anymore, you know? And I know your kids are in college, but it seems to be that college seems to be this. Uh, yeah, it's years in high school. 
Oh, okay. Like, they're they're in high school. Okay, so they're going to college. It seems to be high school. Okay. I hope uh, so. No, that's a plan. That's a plan. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know you've been in over, from what I researched, you were, uh, you've been in over 150 movies and TV shows and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. What are you working on now? Are you working on anything now? Um, um, I, I did a movie called Imperatus um, okay. several months ago. Um, Imperatus is terrific. And uh, another movie called the, the Legend of Jack and Diane. That's a terrific movie. Um, they're both okay. going to be coming out in the next uh, next six, six months to a year. So, um, um, and I'm going to be doing a movie that I, I, I can't talk about with the, the guy who directed uh, okay. Legend of Jack and Diane. So, yeah, I'm still working. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll keep an eye out. Uh, Tom, it has been an honor. And uh, thank you very much. And I hope you are the first of great actors I could interview now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too, John. I hope so too. Yeah, man. This, really, this was great. I had a lot, a lot of fun. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, ask me again, okay? okay? Absolutely. You got it. Right. Have a good night. Right. You too. Bye bye.